Hello, everybody. My name is Bennett Tchaikovsky, and welcome to my Wiley PowerPoint walkthrough. This is for Chapter 15, or Job Order Costing. Uh, this is from the Accounting Tools for Business Decision Making 8th Edition. Authors are Paul Kimmel, Jerry Weingant, and Jill Mitchell. The PowerPoint used in the presentation is copyright 2023 by John Wiley and Sons. All rights are reserved. This is for educational purposes only. The video may not be distributed or redistributed without the express permission of Wiley. This PowerPoint presentation is copyright 2023 by Bennett Tchaikovsky. All rights are reserved. The opinions contained within this presentation are those of Bennett Tchaikovsky and not the authors of the text or Wiley. So Wiley's been cool enough to allow me to take the PowerPoint slides that they've made for managerial accounting and to kind of go through and I don't want to say make it my own, but just kind of walk through and make that available to you on my channel. So let's go ahead and go to it. So we'll kind of go here and just uh, go ahead and here see how this works. Um, I'm not sure exactly what is showing up here, but let's just go ahead and um, do it like this. Okay, perfect. Okay. Got to use these slides and uh, chapter overview. Okay. Okay. So cost. Okay. So the whole thing with job order costing is that what we're kind of going through and doing um is to kind of go through and say like what we learned in chapter 14 was we had three separate t accounts we had our raw materials factory payroll and then we had our factory overhead but we only had one work in process account now what we're going to have is because we're doing job order costing we're going to have multiple accounts and when we kind of think about this is that who are we kind of going through and doing this for is that, you know, like right over here is like, we're kind of focusing on, okay, basically we're focusing on measuring, recording, and reporting costs. And, you know, we also really want to basically make sure that if we have a particular job that might be going over budget, that we have a way to kind of go through and, and look at that. Process costing is chapter 16, and that's when we have high volume uh, happenings. And they're basically mass production, right? So we're dealing with job order costing. And so essentially, and I don't know why they're talking about process costing right now, but let's go ahead over here to job order costing. So you have over here is like job order cost system. Costs are assigned to each job or batch. Um, basically, each job or batch has its own uh, distinguishing uh, characteristics. And, you know, again, the object is to compute the cost per job. So what I want you to kind of think about is that if we're an auto mechanic and I say I bring in my Kia and I pull up in my Kia and I get my bill and there's an invoice for a Lexus, for a radiator for a Lexus, that's not going to make a lot of sense right? Because, you know, when you have job order costing, it's for the customer, right? We need to kind of go through and basically compute that cost per job. Now, in terms of like what's going on over here, as we kind of see this uh, job order costing for film production, uh, you know, this might be, yeah, like, so you've got an animated film, action thriller, uh, I guess this is a way of kind of going through and doing it because if you're making multiple films, but what I would probably say though, is that within, if you are doing this for a film, you know, you're, you're going to probably keep track of each one of these two different items, all these different items separately, just so you can kind of have a better sense in terms of what's, uh, what's going through. So let's, yikes. Okay. So here we go, and a okay, job order cost flow. So again, we still have the same parts over here. We still have um, when you start out, you're going to start out with you've got your raw materials inventory, you have your factory payroll, you're going to have your factory overhead, and then these are going to basically once we put those into production, they're going to feed into work in process. Once we basically take it out of work and process to finish goods, that's what we're going to be calling our cost of goods manufactured. And then it's going to go over here to cost of goods sold. So yeah, just like this, these are the T accounts I like. Uh, so we finally got here, right? So raw materials, inventory, factory label, 
factory labor, and then manufacturing overhead goes to work in process, finished goods, and cost of goods sold. And it's reminding me of that Family Guy episode, which, Peter, what color is the fire truck? Okay. So um, I don't really like to focus on journal entries in this particular chapter for my classes, but the one that I will focus on is when it comes to manufacturing overhead. Because we're going to see that there's going to be a little bit of a difference in terms of how we go through and account for that in this particular chapter. Okay. So factory labor costs. Okay. So again, I'm not really excited about these kinds of things. Um, and then manufacturing overhead, as long as these relate to production, that's fine. Okay. Wow. Flashcards and crossword puzzles. That sounds pretty exciting. Uh, use a job cost sheet to assign costs. Okay. Again, something that I'm not going to, wow, there's a lot of stuff I don't do. This is like, I'm not sure if that's good or bad, but I try to make myself at least a little bit easier. Um, raw materials costs. Okay. Requisitions. Okay. So this is what we would call, so this is what's really important here is that when you look at raw materials, this is when it goes to work in process, we call this direct materials. If it goes to manufacturing overhead, it's going to be indirect materials. But going back and looking at our fire truck, which I probably you know, don't ever want to leave again. So just kind of look at it like this. It's the indirect materials are going to travel from raw materials inventory to manufacturing overhead, while the direct materials are going to come over here to work in process inventory. OK, let's see if we can kind of go through and look. Raw materials, uh, again, raw materials costs, knowledge check, okay, factory labor costs, right? So when we go through and have factory labor costs, basically, again, you have this process here where factory labor, you have direct labor, which is basically right over here, which goes to work in process. And then you have indirect labor that travels to manufacturing overhead. And so again, that's really the indirect labor. Um, okay, do it, do it to do it, do it, do it. Da, na, 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 na. Okay, manufacturing overhead costs. Okay, so here's the big difference in between going in between these two different items over here. And this is really kind of talking about when we look at, you know, chapter 14 versus chapter 15. When we were doing chapter 14, we had the actual amount of the manufacturing overhead over here. Remember that the only account factory labor, manufacturing overhead have to have zero balances. Okay, so they have to have zero balances. So these are going to have to be closed out to zero and go to work in process. Now, when it comes to overhead, we have a bit of a conundrum. The conundrum is I need to invoice my customers as quickly as possible. In order to my invoice my customers as quickly as possible, what I need to do is to estimate my overhead. And what I'll typically do is I'll say, okay, we're going to find out there's a lot of different ways we can estimate overhead. But for right now, we use something called what we call single plant wide, which we would say, okay, I'm going to estimate overhead based on a percentage of direct labor cost or perhaps direct materials cost. So I might say, oh, I'm assigning, I'm going to apply overhead based on 150% of direct labor. So what's going to happen is, is I'm going to be estimating my overhead to the various different work and process accounts. So if my factory labor is 100 and I'm applying it at a 70% rate, then my applied overhead would be 70. What's going to happen is, is in the manufacturing overhead T account right here, you're going to have your actual and applied. Whatever that difference is, right? So there's going to be a difference. And that difference is basically generally going to go to cost of goods sold. Unless it's materially significant, then it's going to be handled a little bit differently. Okay, so right over here. 
Like how do we go through and we use a predetermined overhead rate? So again, it can be on direct labor costs, direct labor hours. It's whatever, there's a relationship between our overhead and one of the cost drivers, which might be machine hours or anything that is an equitable basis for applying overhead to jobs. So this is also, again, this is basically another way of saying single plant wide, small companies use a single company wide predetermined rate. We'll talk about this more in chapter 17 when we get into activity based costing. So over here, we would go through and assign this and where this is going to be coming out of. So it's a calculation. So you get a predetermined overhead rate. So you basically, whatever direct labor we're charging, we're going to be going through and then applying it at a certain percentage of an overhead rate. Okay. Okay. So basically it's going to be basically coming out of manu the credit to manufacturing overhead, debiting work in process, right? So what I like to do again, we're on slide 55. Let's go back to our favorite slide 16. What I like to do is on this T account right over here is I would like to write in over here, actual on the left, applied on the right. When I go through and apply it, I'm going to be crediting manufacturing overhead and I'm going to be debiting work in process inventory. I cannot tell you the importance of using T accounts for this chapter. If you are going through, and I have a video where I, it's an eight part series video that I made on my own that will hopefully try to help you explain. They'll try to hopefully help you kind of understand it, but here you go. Right. So this is probably the better way to go through and look at it. These are the actual amounts over here. This is what I'm applying or what I'm estimating based on that part. Okay. So over here, we get some more worksheets. Wow. Okay. So over here, money, there's a money won, money lost. Okay. Yeah. By the way, I've known companies that don't know how much something costs. That's kind of scary. Okay, so you're doing a predetermined overhead rate. Okay, predetermined overhead rate. Okay, and then over here, uh, completed and sold. Wow, okay, same, same kind of concept as before. Okay, and wow, look at this. This is actually kind of cool. This is actually like, so right over, I'd like to have this be like a little bit longer, but this is not the cool fire truck because we like fire trucks, but right over here, We've got raw materials inventory. You've got direct and indirect materials coming out. Remember this and this down here, this is gonna have to go down to zero and we'll show you kind of how that works momentarily. Um, as we come over here again, so more documents. Okay. Okay, service companies. Okay, disadvantages. The disadvantages is like, okay, but at the same time though, if we think about it in terms of the customer, if we have to deliver an invoice to the customer showing what we've done for them, that's what we're going to go through and do. So here is the big one. I'm kind of curious to see how Wiley handles this, right? If only my students were smiling like this when I teach them, but they generally aren't. Over here, um, if I look at this, and I would want to try to look at this as like, a, this is the way you want to look at it, right? So actual applied, right? So actual or incurred and applied. I have to make this account go to zero. If the net amount is a $1,400 credit, I'm going to have to credit the amount. And then I'm going to have, you know, debit cost of goods sold. Now, this is only if it is materially insignificant to cost of goods sold. Like if cost of goods sold is like a hundred grand and you've got a $1,400 debit balance, this is like 1.4% of cost of goods sold. So we can just go ahead and book it, right? But again, and the reason why I like to say actual applied on the T account is that here I have under applied, right? My applied is less than my actual by 1,400. So this is under applied overhead. Now this journal entry here is that if you're taking my class, this is the one journal entry that I will make you go through and do in my course. Okay, so over here, partial income statement. I don't even know why they're doing that. Okay, uh, applied manufacturing overhead, and that's the end of it. So um, 
you know, like it's a great, um, like, look, I'm not going to be critical of Wiley or any other one that, or any other publisher that goes through and does this because this is actually a lot of work. Um, but I do, I will share with you, just give me one moment. So over here, this is my, these are my slides over here for job order costing, right? I'm not saying that these are going to be perfect or anything else like that. But I think though, that if you, if you kind of go through and look at these, and of course I'm going through and referring to the Google Sheets, which I will show, share with you uh, right now. So if I come over here to my Google Sheets, okay. so again, the way that I'm going to go through and set up things is that I'm going to have my raw materials, factory payroll, factory overhead, actual applied. I will post in my in this video links to the different questions I have. And as you can kind of see over here, I have gone through and I've worked through several of Wiley uh, questions generally with like my methodology, but uh, hopefully that you'll find these helpful. And as you're going through and learning about job order costing. So as with all these different types of things, the only the best advice I can give you is to keep on going through and working through problems. That's the best way you're going to go through and learn. So in any event, I want to thank Wiley for um, allowing me to make these videos. Um, if you have any comments, so if you have any questions on basically what I've done here, um, again, you know, it's it's a harder concept, but the thing I want to share with you about job order costing is use T accounts. Um, if you try going through and doing it with journal entries, it's going to be really confusing. If your professor is using journal entries, that's okay, but I would really try to learn it with T accounts first and then go through and learn it with journal entries. So thank you for being with me here today, and I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Have a great rest of your day.